ninjutsu as perceived by the world today is an art that trained their members in warfare, mastering weapons, unarmed combat techniques, guerrilla warfare, and espionage. They were considered the master spies of their time. Ninjutsu was created in Japan about 1100 years ago, and true, they were hired by reigning warlords as spies and assassins. But this was only necessary for survival, to protect themselves and their leaders, much as today, our modern armies train men to protect their countries and families. Japanese Grandmaster Masaaki Hatsumi is a descendant of the ninja tradition and recognized leader of this art today. Dr. Hatsumi trains his members not to seek confrontation, but to enhance their mental and physical health through ninjutsu training, to live a life of honor and respect, obeying the laws of man and nature. One of his leading disciples and certified instructor of ninjutsu is Jack Hoban. Hi everybody, this is Jack Hoban again with uh, Art of the Ninja Volume 3 for Black Belt Video. Today we're going to be talking about the real nuts and bolts of ninja combat, and that is the kamai or stances or attitudes or postures um, uh, that we use, some of the basic ones. Um, we're also going to be talking about the nuts and bolts of punching and kicking the different fists, how to deliver a punch, how to hold your hand, these kind of real nitty-gritty things, and also uh, the front kicks and side kicks and stomp kicks and back kicks, uh, these kind of things as well. So I think you'll find this very, very helpful in terms of turning your uh, movements into something that can really deliver the kind of uh, blows that you need to have when you're trying to uh, uh, defend yourself or defend someone else. Um, uh, working with me today is a couple of folks. Uh, Dale Sego, who's a uh, very good instructor uh, from the San Francisco area, and Larry Gregg, and who's also in the northern, the central uh, and northern California area. I'm going to ask Dale to just show the basic uh, striking uh, fundamental techniques of, uh, of our system. If you just throw Fudo Ken from Shizen no Kamai. So as you can see, it's a little bit unusual. The right leg is forward and the right arm is forward. It's a little bit different than what I learned in uh, karate systems and also in boxing. But I found that it works really well because it creates a good distance for a real fight. As you can see, the fist is way out in front, but his body is way back there. So he may, if he's in the right position, as we'll talk about later, he may be able to hit you, but you may not be able to reach him if he's at the right angle. The Fudo Ken, if you can see this here, let's move sideways, Dale. If you can see, um, oh, I'm sorry. If you can see here, he's got his thumb tucked in over his fingers. That's so that it won't be pulled off when he's hitting and he's hitting kind of with these front two knuckles. Also a little bit unusual is, um, in, in this case, the knuckles are kind of facing sideways. Maybe in, in different systems, you've seen the knuckles facing this way. Really doesn't make any difference. Um, the most important thing is you want to keep your wrists straight so that it's supported by your arm and your body all the way back to your back leg there when you hit it. Now, if you notice, if he doesn't have that straight and he hits with these back knuckles, it starts to bend. You can see that bend. So when he throws this punch out right at my hand here, gosh, I can lean right on him. And he can support it all the way back down to his back foot. So if you'd like, if you can zoom in here a little bit, the Fudo can just like that. The wrist is straight. Thumb is tough. Delivering it very naturally, right leg, right hand, the same. Striking just like that. And that's the Fudo Ken. How would it be used? If Dale uh, throws a Fudo Ken at me, I may move out of the way, and then I would use it right into his body like that. And you can see that I'm really not using a lot of power, 
but the alignment is there. So that when I whip my spine around to hit, I'm supporting it and I'm not letting my wrist bend or, uh, or injuring myself. You gotta be very careful that you don't hurt your own hand when you strike something, particularly if you don't have a glove on. If you notice with boxers, they uh, tend to strike a little bit differently and to protect their wrist and to keep it straight, they wrap it. They wrap it to keep it protected that way. And very often, sometimes they break their hands uh, anyway. So um, again, since we don't have the option of, of wrapping our hands in a street fight, it's very important to keep that wrist straight when you uh, hit with the, the fudo can. Okay, the next strike, Dale, if you, uh, from the same position she, uh, she's in, the uh, Amote Chiton. Okay, so that's a Amote Chiton. One more time. Can you do it from the side? Okay. Now the important part here, again, is this Chiton, here's the striking area, right here, this kind of fatty part. Not the bone, not the bone. And when it strikes, this hand, uh, just relax your fingers for a second, as it comes flying through, snaps open. Snaps open. Snaps open and hits with this fatty part of the hand. Okay, can you do that one more time? Notice how he snaps it open at the last split second. Boom, very nice, okay? So how this would be used, again, if Dale is uh, striking at me, moving out of the way, and I'm coming up, the, you can see the hand is, is still closed, at the last split second, boom, strikes in and snaps open for that extra shocking power. And also, the, um, the, uh, the opponent here can't see the open hand, so he may not know exactly what's hitting him. It may look to him like I'm going to miss because he doesn't see this hand open at the, la at the last split second. Boom, right, just like that. And it's a relaxed, it's a very relaxed thing. It's, it's delivered with a spine and just snaps open very relaxed way. And you can see that has quite a lot of shocking power without any uh, tension in the arm. See, it's not this. It's not that. It's very relaxed. In fact, let's put your arm over here. It's, it's very relaxing. You have to uh, really picture that the, the power is coming from the spine. And uh, at the last split second, that snaps open with a lot of shocking power. So that's the amote chuteau. And the best way to practice that against is something skinny, like an arm or a neck or a padded pole or something like that. But make sure, again, that you're not striking with this portion or your fingers. You hurt your fingers or you break this little bone here. You want to fat, hit with this fatty part, almost flat, almost flat, just a little bit up, almost flat against the target, just a little bit up, just like that, almost flat, almost cupped, just a little bit out, just like that. Mota chuteau. A multi means open, so that the open side of your hand is up, okay? All right. The next one is Uda Shuto, and Uda means closed or the other side or um, in, in Japanese. So basically what we're talking about is hitting not with the open side of your hand up, but with the open side of your hand down and the kind of the closed side of the top side of your hand is up. So from Shizu Nakamai, could you demonstrate this? Uh, Urashutal. Okay, same snapping open of the hands at the last second. Next, one more, please. Same striking with that fatty part of the, the hand, not the side. Dale, can you just face over here and do it one more time? Either way, either way. Okay, see how that's sliding straight out there like that? And the way that this is used is, again, very similar. 
Mm, maybe, maybe on this side, Dale, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, he goes to strike. And right from here, just in there like that. Okay? In there like that. Okay, one more time, we'll do it slow. Again, receiving. Right here. Striking. And following through. Again. Not hitting with the with the bone, hitting with a fatty part, almost like the the uh, almost the palm, really, right? Comes up again. Okay. And it just there's not a lot of power in my arm. The power is generated by kind of my spine unwinding. So instead of looking at the hand this time, look at my spine. I'm storing a little energy here. I'm just let it released into the hand. That way, he doesn't see a lot of energy. You see, as soon as I put a lot of energy in my arm, he's sensitive and he, he starts to move away. But um, if, I, if it's relaxed, 